Thank you for tuning in to another week of Heal and Emerge Radio broadcast. My name is Quandria Patterson. We are coming from Matthew chapter 13 in this month's study. And our topic is the purpose of parables. Last week we covered um, Matthew verse chapter 13 verses 1 through 13. This week we'll be picking up with verse 14 and we'll read um, a, a couple of more verses wherever God stops us. That's where we'll stop for this week. Before I get into the messages again, um, just like last week I said that we are focusing on youth empowerment this month and we want to highlight our youth. We want to make sure that they are getting everything that they need to be successful in life. It's best when they learn these things at a young age and when they're supported and when they are empowered so that when they have to use these skills, it's not strange to them. So we are having an event at the Bell Line Park on July the 22nd. That's a Saturday. We will be having a basketball tournament and we will be talking about other programs that we are um, unveiling and putting into motion uh, with youth at the head. And so we want you to come out and we want you to support and we want you to join us. On Saturday, July the 22nd, we will be giving away cash prizes. Uh, we're selling raffle tickets for $3. The prizes will go up to $100 in cash. So we do want you to get your raffle ticket. Um, you can call us at one 855 Seven nine zero eight two two two. That is eight five five seven nine zero eight two two two. If you have any questions, leave a message and we will get back to you as quickly as possible. And we are asking for any canned the food, fruit. Um, just canned goods as a donation if you have any that you want to contribute to our We Care Food Stop. This is our youth with different learning abilities um, doing a food stop to help support those who are hungry. It's just an additional resource to the many resources that we already have. Um, but we did want to design a program where our special needs community are able to um, be a part of giving and contributing to the community in a way that helps others because they appreciate the help that they're receiving. So that is our uh, We Care Food Stop and we are asking for canned food donations for those, for that particular program. And then we also have our little free library. And that We Care Food Stop is a little free food stop. I mean, food food um, pantry. Yeah, it's a little free food pantry. Um, we have a little free library that we're doing. And um, our youth is leading that uh, program to where um, they'll be reading um Periodically, but we're thinking about doing it maybe twice a month um, with that program on Saturdays. But stay tuned for more information on that. And that will be um, what you will kind of see what it looks like on Saturday, July 22nd. But we are asking for any book donations that you have or any type of literature that you think would be productive and teaching our youth and supporting our youth in that way. 
We also have a basketball tournament that we're doing. Um, three versus three. Ten dollars a person, thirty dollars a team, and the prizes are a hundred and fifty dollars for first place, ninety dollars for second place, and sixty dollars for third place. So if you want to um play basketball, if you're a basketball player and you want a chance to win cash prizes, then come and support in that way. Um, that again, that is July the twenty second. That's a Saturday, and we hope to see you there. Now let's go ahead and get into our word. And this month we are talking about the purpose of parables. When we read last week Matthew chapter thirteen verses one through thirteen, Jesus had given examples of the different types of ground. And he said, um, he gave the example of, it's called the parable of the sower and how the sower, when the sower sows seed, that the state of the ground determines what happens to the seed that he sows. Same seed, nothing changes with the seed, but the ground that the seed lands on determines how that seed grows and develops in that ground. And he gave four different types. He gave uh, wayside. He said the wayside ground, it just falls off. It doesn't penetrate. It doesn't, it's not received. It just falls on the wayside and the birds come and they eat it up. And then he gave the category of the ground of stony places the stony ground and he said when the seed good seed lands on stony ground there's not much earth there and it immediately springs up because it had no depth of earth to it it wasn't deep it was it was a shallow ground so so the seed can't penetrate it because it's not and it's not much depth there. And then he gave the example of thorns. And he said when it falls among thorns, the thorns are are so um pricky. They all they're just there to inflict pain and to stick that there is no no reception of the word there. The thorns just choke it. It's not receiving, it's attacking the word. So it chokes the life out of the seed when it's sown on among thorns or on thorny ground. And then he gave the example of good ground. Now, when he described good ground, and he says it yields crop. He says it yields much crop. Some 100, some 60, I mean, and some 30. And he, he compares that good ground to people who can hear. People who hear and receive the word and allow the word to change their reality. And for the better, for the good, they learn from the word, they apply the wisdom of the word, and then they, re they return crop. You see the evidence of their hearing in their life. So hearing is determined by the response of the ground that that seed, that word is sown into. So he, this was in Matthew chapter 13, and I'm pretty much paraphrasing verses 3 through 9. So that's what we talked about um, last week. And then we ended with verse number 13, where he says, Therefore I speak to them in parables, 
because seeing they do not see, hearing they do not hear, nor do they understand. So that understanding, he's saying, is a matter of the type of ground that is receiving or is on the receiving end of the word. If you hear and you understand, then that's evidence in how how you how you um, present yourself after hearing the word. If you present yourself the same as you did before you heard the word, you may be one of those first three grounds. If you present yourself differently as a result of hearing the word, you allow the word to make a difference in your life, then that's evident of the fact that you are good ground because it got in you, you listened to it, you applied it, and that application was a, was reflected in how you presented yourself after hearing. So that was what we, um, that's where we stopped last week in verse number 13. So that's the recap. Let me go ahead and do our scriptures that we read every week, starting from Isaiah um, chapter 55, verses 8 to 11. It says, let's go ahead and re- go up to chapter 6 this week. We're going to... Um, do Isaiah 55. We're going to start with verse number six. It says, seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord and he will have mercy on him. And uh, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain comes down, and the snow from heaven, and do not return there, but water the earth, and make it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing which I sent it. So God is saying that his word will not return to him void. So when his word goes out, and we are the ground that that word falls on, and we are saying, that we are people of faith and that we trust God to accomplish his word in our life, then we are ready listeners. We're seeking, what are you saying, God? We're not rejecting seed. We are not, um, we're not attacking the word. We are receiving it. We are good ground. If we're not good ground, we can judge whether or not we're good ground by the parables that Jesus talked about in our scripture reading on last week. Is it just falling by the wayside? Are we just like, I uh, can't hear that. Talk to the hand. Miss me with that. You're doing too much. Tell that to somebody else. Um, I I hear what you're saying, but in my life, it's different. You know, when you're hearing the word, what is your response? What is your response to the word being sown in your life? Are you receiving it? Are you saying, is this word something that will address an area that needs um, healing in my life? Let me see if this applies to me. Let me search my heart. Let me search my mind. Let me search myself and see if this word is applicable in any area of my life and help me to apply it so that I can see 
the fruits of it so that I can see it prospering like God intended for it to prosper when he, when he put it, put me in position to hear it. I'm saying it that way. So if, if things are not happening in our life, if we are not feeling as though God is God's word is not making a difference in areas where we're seeking him, then we need to look at ourselves and see what type of ground are we. Am I expecting God to do a whole lot while I do a very little or nothing? Am I expecting God to change my life when I know I'm messed up in these areas? But, you know, I'm not even focused on what I need to fix. I'm just saying, Lord, I'm your child. You know, why are you treating me like this? Why are you not answering my prayers when I got a whole bunch of stuff over here that is, is straight out of line? with the word straight out of line with the will of God that I'm just completely ignoring those things can't be why I'm going through what I'm going through it has to be that God is ignoring my prayers so we have to look at our life look at where we are out of line with God because we can't be out of line with God and then expecting God to do everything for us. And then when he don't, we get mad with him or we say, you know, he ain't answering my prayers. Why he ain't answering my prayers, but we ain't willing to, to fix this stuff. That's, that's straight in contradiction with what the word is saying. We know it, and everybody else know it. We out of line. But we don't want to focus on getting in line. We just, we just want God to change his scripture, change his word, to accommodate our sin and our unwillingness to get in line with him. And it don't work that way. So... God's thoughts and God's ways are higher than ours. They're not like ours. And we read this scripture every week because we want to place our focus on getting in line with him. So that when he sends his word to us, we can allow that word to cleanse some of this filth out of our life. And then we can experience the prosperity of God, not through natural things, but that spiritual prosperity, that joy and peace and righteousness through the Holy Spirit. That eternal life that that Jesus died that we might have. Jesus, the, the Savior of all men the bread of life so that we can experience his sacrifice for us so that we could um, be living a life that is through him and making a difference in other people's lives because we're following Christ and they see that and it's something that they desire and, they, and that they seek. Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. So some of the issue with um, it, it looking as though sin is prevailing is because we ain't lifting up Jesus. We're lifting up every, everybody else and everything else, but we're not lifting up Jesus the savior of all men, the bread of life. We're not lifting up Jesus and we have to do better. So let's go ahead and go to the prayer that Jesus told the disciples to pray in Matthew chapter six. We read this prayer every week. Also, he told them in this manner, therefore pray our father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, 
your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. But deliver us from the evil one. That's the, that's the part of verse number 13 that sticks out to me today. Deliver us from the evil one. The word is here to do just that. But we have to eat the word daily. Give us this day our daily bread. And we have to ask for forgiveness. Forgive us our trespasses. Now, earlier when I was talking about we're not fixing things in our life, if if you're not if you're not fixing what's wrong in your life, then you're not asking for forgiveness. You're just asking for God to do what you what you feel like you need done in your life. You're not acknowledging that you're doing wrong, that you jacked up, that you just completely um, ignoring what the scripture says about this and that area of your life. Then you 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 haven't even arrived at the place to where you can ask for forgiveness because you're not acknowledging that you that you messed up. So the first. Before you get to forgiveness, you have to acknowledge that that I'm messed up. That that I I'm I'm having all these things happen to me, and I feel attacked, and I'm doing all this stuff that's out of line with the Word of God, and I have not made Jesus Lord of my life. And I got these habits and these things going on that we'll we'll deal with that later. I need you to fix this right now, God. That right there, you know, that that's gonna take time. I've been doing this so long. That's that's something that's just gonna take time, and I, I might not ever uh uh-uh, change from that. It's just uh, it's been with me too long. I'm too old. I've been doing it too long. Let's just we just ain't gonna even worry about that guy. But I need you to fix this over here. And that's not how it works. You don't get to say um, this sin here that I have. You know I'm gonna have it. You know until I die, and and I ain't even trying to fix it because it's bringing me comfort. And if I if I get rid of this, I might just fall apart altogether. That's lack of faith. That's not scripture. That's you saying that whatever that thing is is more um more important to your well being than God and his cleansing power. It's more powerful than the sacrifice that Jesus made for all of us. But you still want God to say to help you while you while you're confessing that over there. So first we have to get in position to where we are asking God to forgive us, acknowledging what we're doing wrong, and that is what will help us be delivered from the evil one. We can't say that that evil has more power than God and then expect God to uh, push back evil on the areas where we feel whooped. You know, this part is comforting me. So leave that alone, but I'm feeling, I'm feeling beat up over here with this thing. I need you to deal with that God. We don't get to pick and choose. We align ourselves with God, with the word of God. And when we do that, he delivers us from evil. When we do that, we see the word manifesting and operating in our life. When we do that, we have peace. And we know that that once we um, align ourselves with God and we accept Jesus as our personal Lord and Savior, that we are assured for eternal life with him. When we order, walk in the steps that he's ordered for us, when we keep his commandments, that that connection is an eternal connection. 
And whether we're on this side of life or the next side of life, we are living eternally with God through Christ Jesus, being led and being guided by the Holy Spirit. So we have to know that and we have to be willing to trust God that if we let this stuff go, that he'll have our back. If we let this stuff go, that he's there for us and with us. He'll guide us, he'll lead us, and he'll comfort us. And we have to know that. So my prayer for us all today is that we we do an inventory of our life. What is it that we can do better? And let's try to fix some of that stuff while we are asking God to to help us and to deliver us from this evil one. Let's let's pray that God delivers us from the evil one, but let's let's clean up some of this stuff that and that has nothing to do with the evil one. That's just us not aligning ourselves with God. And I pray for strength in that area in Jesus name for all of us. Amen. All right, let's go ahead and get into our word. We are going to be picking up with Matthew chapter 13. We're starting with verse number 14. And it reads, And in them the prophecy of Isaiah is fulfilled, which says, Hearing you will hear and shall not understand, and seeing you will see and not perceive. For the hearts of this people have grown dull. Their ears are hard of hearing, and their eyes they have closed. Lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears. Lest they should understand with their hearts and turn so that I should heal them. This is Jesus speaking. Blessed, but blessed are your eyes, for they see and your ears, for they hear. For assuredly, I say to you that many prophets and righteous men desire to see what you see and did not see it, and to hear what you hear and did not hear it. Therefore, hear the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom, And does not understand it, the wicked one comes and snatches away what was sown in their heart. This is who received the seed by the wayside. This is he who received the seed by the wayside. But he who received the seed on stony places, this is he who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet he has no root in himself. But he endures only for a while, for when tribulation and persecution arises because of the word, immediately he stumbles. Now he who receives the seed among the thorns is he who hears the word, and the cares of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and he becomes unfruitful. But he who receives the seed on good ground is he who hears the word and understands it. He who indeed bears fruit and produces some a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, and some thirtyfold. So this is the parable explained. Last week we asked the question, do you have ears to hear? This week, I want to ask the question, what type of ground are you? What type of ground are you? We've heard from Jesus. We heard him last week explain the parable of the ground and the seed and the um the sower sowing seed. This week, he's replacing the seed with the word. And how when we interpret the word, If we are good ground, we'll yield the fruit. But if we are not, we'll allow the enemy 
to intercept and distract the word out of our life and our ground will be either wayside, stony, or thorny. What type of ground are you? Until next week, be blessed. And if you have not already, accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Amen.